the site on South African roads that everyone loves to hate. The snags, snares and traps of traffic law enforcement. Traffic police claim they're only doing their jobs to make the country's roads safer. But has the business of traffic fines become an actual business, one that puts profit before principle? My name is Howard Dembovsky. I'm the chairman of the Justice Project South Africa. Uh, our organization was, was formed in, in June 2008. Our organization deals with the abuse of power within law enforcement structures. We are a public watchdog, if you like, to make sure that, that the public's rights are not abused. They're sitting hiding behind cameras, taking people's photographs. This is the hit squad of Justice Project South Africa, a private organization that fights for fair treatment of ordinary citizens. JMPD has been one of our primary targets because they're amongst the worst in the country. However, this is something that is widespread. Um, the abuse of traffic enforcement throughout the whole of South Africa is one of the biggest areas of, of abuse. Justice Project South Africa recently took on the traffic authorities for issuing thousands of illegal fines. At issue is that officials are not always obeying the law. Director Ferneke of JMPD explains. In terms of the TCSP guidelines, you need to approve or apply to the director of public prosecutions to do speed camera law enforcement. And we also don't get approval for a site uh, for the whole of Barry Hartsoff Avenue. Each site has to be uh, included individually. Special assignment went on patrol with the Justice Project team to test the claim that sites are determined randomly. It's a little bit late to pack up, guys. It wasn't long before we witnessed a case in point. We found a high-ranking official already at the scene asking his officers to pack up. Are you guys from the internal thread? Because that's not set up in, in accordance with the PCSP guidelines. Yeah. That's why we have to yeah. up. I told them that they did a mistake there. Okay. What about all those infringement notices? Okay. No, they did not. We're going to delete them. You're going to delete yeah. them? Why were they set up there in the first place? Pardon? Why were they set up there in the first place? In the first place? Yes. No, that's why I have to get it from, from their supervisor. Mm. Yeah. This is happening too much. Okay. This is criminal. This is not pre preventing people from speeding. This is making money. Okay. You agree with me? No, I've, I've said it. I just, like, like I tell you, I found it it's wrong what they're doing. Unqualified staff operating the equipment is also a problem. Not only does this officer not have the required operator certificate, she denied even having pressed a button on the camera. He's you, operating. You I'm were just operating. I'm accompanying him. You were operating it, ma'am. You were operating it. Okay. So I went there to switch off the machine. So in other words, you're impersonating a police officer. Later, the Metro Cops confided in us as to why they had to set up two kilometers from their approved site. Why, what are they saying? Ah, they say that, that lady, they, because this is the wrong place. But at the first place, they didn't, they didn't say it's the wrong place. I came here in 2007, speed section. Yeah. We, have, we have been sitting here since. At first, Director Herneke denied his officers were trapping illegally, but changed his mind when he heard his deputy was involved. Who decided it was the wrong site? He is the one who actually arrived as we were actually asking. Have you had the guidelines with you? Yes, and we had the site approvals. And the guys said, oh, we have been trapping since 2007 and we were told by a technician of company so and so to do it. Now, I, will, I would like to know who the office is and we'll take it up with him and we'll charge him because that should not be happening. Meanwhile, across town, another JMPD team is found to be trapping illegally. Please do not. They put beat your a hasty retreat the as special assignment approaches. Your capture box. It's your battery pack. Okay, why is it being put in, into the vehicle? 
This time, Justice Project South Africa decides to lay a charge with the South African police. We have a situation here. JMPD is trapping in an unauthorized site. Okay. They're using their camera to, um, to trap vehicles supposedly speeding. They're supposed to be about between two and five kilometers away from here. So you're refusing to accept a charge? No, of impersonating. No All right. No and the fact that they're committing fraud by being where they're not supposed to be is also they okay. Yes, they are. By law, any member of the public has the right to check that the Metro Police are operating correctly. But in this case, the police officials refuse to act. In this video captured by members of the public, a Metro Police officer admits being in the wrong place. She explains her actions. That's why I was sitting that side. That's why when you came here, you find the car which was looking uh, down the There is a lot of uh, illegal trapping within the JMPD. The JMPD ranks one of That the to me is a general statement. I have yet somebody to come and show me that is something that is done illegally for the purpose of making extra income. And every time I could actually prove to you that we are running a clean system. But the Automobile Association begs to differ. Certainly evidence um, within the JMPD, for example, has shown that not only is the equipment being used illegally, um, in, in, in essence that it just doesn't comply with the standards that are set, but also that, that, that the places where they have been putting them up, um, per, the, the appropriate permission um, has not been granted for those particular sites. That is called unlawful prosecution. I think many people need to understand this. Okay, when I say people, I'm talking about the law enforcement authorities. With millions of vehicles on South Africa's roads on any given day, few can lay claim to not having received at least one fine in the mail. The JMPD alone issues over 200,000 fines per month, but not all are legitimate, as David McMaster of Krukasdorp recently found out. The pensioner was recently asked to pay up to two suspicious fines. But when in the same post, you get the second ticket, and that shows you one minute after the first ticket, here's a second fine. The first question that came through my mind is, is it fair? In other words, what they, what, what, what they can do is they can put... 15 cameras a mile apart or a kilometer apart and they can tap the same person 15 times. Is that fair? That's the question I ask. According to times recorded on the infringements, David was first caught at N1 North by Canada Road Bridge at 11.37 a.m. before he was zapped a minute later at the N1 North Deep Kloof Interchange about five kilometers behind him. To have done what the photograph on the fine accused him of, David would have been driving along at over 300 kilometers per hour on the freeway in reverse gear. I would not even have noticed the difference had I not gone and sought legal advice. Only to find out that on the first photograph, I'm going forward. The second photograph should have been the first photograph, because I'm on the other side. I'm going backwards. I'm not going forward. My car, according to what they're telling me, and this is what I understand, is I am now going in the reverse gear. And, yes, that, I'd like to see a guy travel at that speed in the reverse gear. So within a space of a minute, David had cloaked more than 2,000 rand in fines. He's not alone. What is interesting about the fact is that two of these fines were for the same uh, day, the same time, uh, to different places. Francesca Alhalase, a single mother from Midrand, was caught on the same stretch of road. When she called to query this, a private company contracted to the JMPD responded. She was advised to pay now and query later. She was also told it's not a legal requirement for clocks on the cameras to be synchronized. What this is telling is that she was told by a private company and not the JMPD. 
But the Metropolis acknowledges mistakes happen. Now, if something like that happened, as I said, it's human to process 200,000 photos. You will not be spot on with everyone, and that's why there's a representation process. A local speed camera manufacturer with markets in Germany and the UK gives us a different view. Certain equipment which has been manufactured locally haven't been stress tested enough and under very dense traffic conditions it might be for example and that is obviously uh, uh, without having done further investigation that uh, the times were entered incorrectly on two different sets of equipment or that one equipment is measuring the vehicle not only once but a few times and that uh, all one set of data is being misaligned and being misappropriated to the wrong image, for example. By law, speed cameras should go under a process of calibration every six months. Calibration is a process by which the camera is serviced and also checked for accuracy. This is basically the starting point of, of, of any successful traffic law enforcement program. You must start off with a set of standards which are rid rigid and have been tested and uh, will cover the equipment operational aspects in, in, in any way uh, once it's been used practically in the field um, and will ensure that the equipment will measure to the degree of uncertainty as specified and brought out by those uh, uh, tribe approval guidelines. With so many questionable traffic fines creeping up, just how competent is the equipment used locally? Now, I think they state of art the best available in the country. Then there's the issue of competency of the camera operators. By law, they should have a special qualification to mend the cameras. As special assignment found out, often this isn't the case. This Metro Corps appointment card is barely visible and there's no way of knowing whether he is who he says he is. There's another problem. From, from January? January? Yes. No, come on. I'm telling you. If we have a quick look at the, this calibration certificate, the expiry on, the, on this is um, the 27th of July 2009, which is all in order. That's 20 days away, so we should imagine that this is all in order. However, if we go and take an ha actual look at the camera, we are now talking about something slightly different. The calibration seal that appears on this camera is different to this because the expiry date on there says the 16th of July 2009. So which one is lying? Which one is the truth? Ooh. That has a latest date. It's got the 27th. This one says the 16th. That's correct. But, but what should I'm not sure how it came out. The attention now moves to this camera. A closer look reveals a foreign object, or to put it simply, a squashed AA battery being used either to balance or hold the speed camera together. The TCSP guidelines are clear. This is an illegal operation. At times, the situation can get out of hand. These officers react negatively when asked to produce their qualifications. There's been a, a, a gradual decrease in the standards um, of law enforcement throughout the country. Each instrument out in the field, doesn't matter what they say, has got its field of application and for that reason we have got operational guidelines for these equipment and if somebody misuses the equipment, yes, you can get wrong results. In the midst of all the confusion, what recourse is there for motorists? They can write a, uh, a representation to the um, municipality concerned saying look we don't agree with this this thing was wrong and nine times out of ten you won't even get a reply back to say yes we've received your letter and we're considering it if you look at the percentage 
of the complaints we are getting and in terms of the representation, it's a very, very tiny percentage, not even 1%. Uh, we, uh, legally we are obliged that Citizen rights organizations like Justice Project South Africa are questioning the role of private companies in speed law enforcement. In return for a commission on every traffic fine issued, these companies supply cameras, vehicles and also handle the bulk load of processing the fines. The rate payers of Johannesburg does not have the infrastructure and the money to sponsor that type of fancy equipment. What's he talking about? Okay, can't afford it. No, of course they can't afford it. They're too busy filling their pockets with the fine money. Or they're too busy filling the private company's pockets. I don't understand and I don't know. Okay. At the end of the day, if you can't afford the state-of-the-art stuff, then don't get the state-of-the-art stuff. It's not really state-of-the-art, by the way. JMPD makes about 30 million rents a month in traffic fines. Herneke says the three contracted companies, MVS, Sintel and TMT Services, are then paid between 30 rand and 40 rand per traffic fine. I think it's disgusting, quite frankly. It translates to volume and nothing else, doesn't it? I mean, if I was running a private company, and believe me, I've, I've run a few, okay, um, volume is, is what you're looking for. Not necessarily the fine value, but how many you can push out. What we've seen happen throughout the country is that the metropolitan areas, so certain municipalities, are reliant on the revenue generated by the speeding cameras um, to actually balance their books or to be able to do further projects, etc. Law enforcement also should be done ideally by the state, government, local authorities, municipalities, metropolitan uh, uh, areas and so forth. Um, the involvement of private companies, although not in the operation of the equipment, but certainly in some of the service provision, makes it um, appear that the whole process is profit-driven profit rather than law enforcement driven. The Road Traffic Management Corporation, which governs all traffic law enforcement in the country, explains. The principle is you can enter into, into a partnership. But that partnership should be in such a way that for law enforcement purposes, private companies should not run the, should not run the law enforcement function. It has been argued that privatizing these functions is cost effective and improves road safety. But how do you draw the line between profit and law enforcement? All three contractors declined our request for interviews, referring all questions to the JMPD. They are paid per prosecutable photo. There is no incentive for them. They don't decide who gets prosecuted. But most Metro cops we caught tripping at wrong sides say contractors pressure them to move to more lucrative sides. In this footage, a contractor is curiously seen here packing away the equipment the moment we arrive. More evidence reveal a clear manipulation of the whole process. Okay, yeah. Field so, metro officers confess that. that the chain of command is so bad they at times okay. take orders from the private company technicians. Okay. According to their site approval, these metro cops are only allowed to trap cars going south, but as photo evidence shows, they are trapping in both directions. Probably because this side wasn't busy, that's why you tried to catch on both sides. Even though he didn't have authorization to do so? You know, you know, when you, you, you come to the technicians, the other technician will tell you it's okay, you can do this both. The other one will say, no, you can only take the one side. They are the ones who normally go out and look for the spots. Look for the spots? Yes. Isn't so the those, director of public prosecutions the one who says where you can and where you can't sit? What happens is, according to what I've heard them say, okay. they would look for the spots yeah. and apply for them to be approved. Right. Thousands of tickets pass through this control room daily, some legitimate, others not. They are also displayed as legitimate on payfine.co.za, a website owned by one of the contractors. But arguably, without the site approval list being made public, most motorists would not dispute, but just pay up. Speed cameras should be seen as a tool for law enforcement officers to perform their functions. 
but private people or private sector should not be seen as now being taken over the responsibility of traffic. This whole thing has been driven by nothing more than financial greed. A traffic department should never make a profit. They're there to serve the community, to look after their safety on the roads. The Road Traffic Management Corporation, however, says profit-taking is soon to be a thing of the past with the introduction of a new traffic act known as ARTO. The act is currently in its pilot phase in Johannesburg and Tswane. Only 20% of the people who are issued with tickets, they pay their tickets. So 80% were never paid. Now, obviously, it's not from the perspective of making money, but it's, it's from the side of compliance to ensure that people, when they pay, when they lose tomorrow, their behavior will change. Under Arto, a driver could lose their driver's license after scoring 12 points in infringement notices. Motorists are also allowed to nominate another driver if they were not the ones driving the vehicle at the time of the infringement. Arrest warrants will also be a thing of the past. In Johannesburg and Twani, there's no way that you can be arrested because you have not paid an infringement. There's a process through ARTO that we are even busy taking education to educate our public to understand uh, what are the implications of ARTO. Until the new system is in place, however, the cat and mouse game continues. More than 90% of the traffic fines issued in Johannesburg are by these mobile speed cameras. The best law enforcement officer is one that you can see all the time because the whole intention of putting up a speed camera, remember, is to force people to slow down. So if you know where the cameras are and you do slow down for, a sa for safety reasons, that's exactly then everything has been achieved. Whether or not you actually have a, a prosecution is immaterial. So you hide? I must hide or else I won't get cases. And then I'll waste my time to go and sit there. There is nothing in the act that stops me to sit in a tree and to hide behind the bush. If we can prove, and we can, that you've prosecuted them unlawfully, then fraud it becomes a very small part of this whole thing. My name is Vimpy Collins, um, I live in Alberton, I've been driving now for over 20 years and it's so a pleasure to, to drive in South Africa. Uh, our roads are good, they're getting better, so it's, uh, it's nice to drive in South Africa. As much as things are looking up, Vimpy is concerned about traffic law enforcement in the country. He recently got the shock of his life when he discovered he had five questionable traffic fines. I've never received so many tickets. I received five in a in, in matter of, of two months. I've never received any notifications via post. If I didn't go onto the website and uh, investigate myself, I wouldn't have known that I've got a, a, a fines against my name. This is the N1 South, the stretch of road Vimpy is said to have been speeding on. If you look at the position of the camera and where they are allowed to tap, it's two different places. Two of the fines I can't even go and pay. I, I need to appear in court, which is uh, for me as a, as a law um, obeying citizen, very serious. Uh, we need to be corrected, understand? But we found that Vimpy is not alone. Rachel is counting the cost of driving on South Africa's roads. Every time I open my box, there's a ticket. No matter how much I try to adhere to the speed limit, I still get the tickets. Sometimes the same place two times, and I've got proof of that. This is one of the duplicated fines that Rachel has had to pay twice. It's amazing how traffic cops were able to measure the speed here, considering two vehicles appear in the same picture. The only thing that I actually suspected was wrong was just the fact that it's the same ticket that I paid twice. But other than that, I don't know. I just look at it and I think, okay, another ticket. And when you go and 
try and query, that is the most annoying part, you know. Then they start to be defensive, arrogant. This is the same ticket issued twice with a different, what do you think is happening here? Something that I know for sure, this is not right, you understand? Is it fraud? I don't know. You never have questions about... But she has had to pay, despite the fact that this was clearly a mistake. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, another motorist is reflecting on the fines he got early this year. All four of them were on the same day, within five, uh, five minutes of each other. This immediately sparked my, my interest and I said, but surely something's not right. And if you look at the distances according to a, a GPS or a map, they're about four kilometers apart. Um, I then did a calculation and said, well, if I do four kilometers in the seven seconds that they they're claiming that I did, what speed would I have been doing? And it turned out that I was doing 2,057 kilometers an hour. When Michael queried the validity of the fines, one of the contractors within JMPD replied. The response I got from TMT services after pressurizing them, they said to me, according to the law, there's no legal requirement for them to synchronize their cameras. They don't have to prove that it was exactly 8.06 in the morning because their cameras don't have to be synchronized. You know, there's something wrong there. In any legal process, the time and date of anything is, is paramount. Nothing is more important than accurate time and date. Previously, you know, like everybody at the moment, you you receive a fine and you say, oh, well, I got another fine, just pay the 500 bucks, pay the 200 rand. Now, I'm, if I receive a fine, it's automatically in my head. I need to have a look at it. I need to see what am I being fined for? Because very often we're getting fined and we're paying for these things and we don't actually know what's going on. We don't know if we're being fined for something that's valid or if it's completely fraudulent. An NGO fighting for the rights of motorists is investigating these claims, including Vumpi's case. The previous program has brought a, a lot of extra people to us and extra cases of, of fraud and extra cases of wrongdoing. Um, on the 9th of September of this year, 2009, we received an email from a chap by the name of Vimpy um, and he listed five infringements that he had received. And um, one of them was particularly interesting and it was one where they stated that the site was uh, on the N1 South at Canada Road Bridge. Now, we all know that Canada Road Bridge has not had grass for at least a year now. You see this grass over here, okay? And here are the GPS coordinates that I was referring to. Now we take that and we have a look at the GPS coordinates, we see that the vehicle was traveling on the N12 East, okay, at Ranchow Road Bridge, okay, so as opposed to N1. The, the split. That's correct, they're taking the split. And we can see exactly where the camera was. GPS coordinates imprinted on the fine show that JMPD's speed camera was located at a totally different location from where Vimpy was at the time. 377 infringements by uh, 1634, in other words, 25 to 5 in, in, the, in the afternoon, and uh, we calculate that at 50% discount. That particular camera made 282,750 rand on that particular day out of fraudulent traffic fines. Mm -hmm. However, if you calculate that over a period of 30 days, it works out to 8,482,500 rand which contractor can we say can we name and shame them yes the contractor here was tmt services end of story tmt services is one of three contractors that provide cameras to jmpd they also run this ticket sorting and issuing center they get 39 rand 50 per ticket issued with more and more cases of illegal traffic fines coming to their attention justice project sa has launched a fraud and criminal complaint against the jmpd bessie is tasked with collecting the evidence the speed limit 100 the recorded speed 120 according to the notice given here the, the, the um, dpp has said that no authority for the direction north as per the metro printout mm -hmm. the authorized direction was south only but then okay. they were tripping. And they were trapping north. I mean, all the proof of it is in here. I've got the copies of everything because here again it says to us, um, Athol Oaklands on the same um, letter, M1 direction south. This stretch of road, referred to as the N12 East in the south of Johannesburg, is one of the centers of contention. 
The road runs parallel to the N1 South at some point. They had their camera set up between two freeways and what they did is they pointed the camera at the freeway where the speed limit was 120 kilometers an hour instead of at the freeway where the, the speed limit was 80 kilometers an hour and they zapped everybody who was doing the legal speed limit or even below and fined them for that. In this picture analysis, this vehicle with the Amcor barrier on its right is on the N12 East but logged as if it's on the N1 South by the JMPD. Video evidence further reinforces the point. So why did the JMPD say this vehicle and many others were on the N1 South Dipkloof interchange? You've got a different interpretation of the Dipkloof interchange that I might have. Then we go to an engineer and he might have a different matter of opinion. But at the end of the day, we must be seen that we are complying with the TCSP guidelines and that is what we are currently trying to do to the utmost. Making up the excuse that the way we uh, interpreted it, it um, just doesn't make any sense. Um, if I say to you, you are an idiot, okay, um, it means you are an idiot. It doesn't mean uh, you can interpret that as me saying you are a genius. This Google Earth map shows the location of the camera on the N12 East. Point 1 here is the N1 South Highway. Point 2 shows the N12 East. Point 3 is the location of the camera just between the two highways. The dip cliff interchange is 2 k's further down. We took the lead as the interchange is the lead word. Now if you say it is the N12 East, if you're on the end, you are tra still traveling south. You're not close to the N12. And we will be debate this for hours because you've got your interpretation, I've got mine. For interest's sake, let's take another look at the highway referred to. Here, the N12 East can be seen splitting and running parallel to the N1 South for about 500 meters, way before the dip cliff interchange. At the point where we had the camera, the persons were still traveling in a southern direction. They were not on the N12, so I'm not going to comment it. It is something that has been dealt with. I can't give you a better explanation. However, further evidence shows that the speed limit here is 120 k's per hour. So how did the JMPD get it so wrong? Over a period of 30 days, 1,000 rand per fine, that works out to 30 million rand. Those tickets will not be cancelled because at that point in time we had the clear indication, the way we interpreted the guideline by the word interchange that we were correct at that time. The site approval list from the Director of Public Prosecutions only allows the JMPD to trap vehicles at over 130 k's per hour. Why JMPD opted to trap at a spot 1.8 k's away is anyone's guess. What we definitely know is that when complaints started coming through, JMPD was ordered off the site. Whether they were on the N12 uh, East or whether they were on the N1 South made no difference. Their authorization was still for trapping at 130 kilometers an hour, not at 90 kilometers an hour. Why were you removed today? Because the DPP felt that there was a misinterpretation of the site location that we were given. She didn't say we were wrong. Remember, it is the DPP's personal choice to either approve, and a lot of the sites we apply for it gets disapproved. And it doesn't say we are wrong. If you are removed after people complain, then something is wrong. No, it's, no, that is your interpretation, sir. It is not my interpretation. However, since our first program, the JMPD has been forced to launch an internal investigation into the issue, the results of which are still pending. We don't really think it's, it's important for the JMPD to investigate themselves. Um, that's very much like going to a rapist and saying, um, investigate yourself for rape. I think what one needs to realize is, is that the charge of fraud cannot be brought unless somebody has actually benefited from the crime. And it is very safe to say that uh, the JMPD has benefited from the crime because a lot of these fines have been paid. As the bickering at the top continues, it's motorists who are left to bear the brunt. Surely, yes, they, they need to do the law enforcement. They need to make sure that uh, everybody obeys the law. But now, how can I trust them? further uh, going forward now that they trying to make money out of me. Is driving in South Africa affordable? Because what I've actually noticed is that every time I'm on the road, I end myself a speed ticket. So 
my argument is that I pay tax, I pay my disc, I pay my license, and every time I'm on the road, I've got to pay for that as well. Because definitely, my conscience is telling me that it's not for the speed. When I receive speeding fines where there is clearly something wrong, I feel, why should I be victimized? Why should I have to pay for it? Why should I pay for somebody else's mistakes? Since, since your complaints. Okay. So, so you can see the pattern is still coming from 9, 2008 when you're dealing with this. That's right. It's and still the exact same pattern. You're... Mm -hmm. Now, the DPP authorization reads direction north between Tamarisk and Lobelia, okay? Under uh, 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 Lobelia streets, at the big trees next to the townhouses, 200 meters from John Forster Ray Road, mm -hmm. okay? The motorist here was traveling south, mm -hmm. which means this is definitely an illegal one. I've got the original yes. sort of image obtained from the metro offices in Randburg. So you can see exactly that the... Exactly. I've been to the site. I went to go and have a look at the exact spot where he was trapped. He was definitely trapped in a south direction. This um, happened on the 8th of May. South Africans rank among some of the worst drivers on the continent. Over 900,000 accidents are recorded on our roads annually. South African motorists are complete and utter lunatics, as far as I'm concerned. Um, if, if I had my way, uh, a couple of things would happen. First off, I'd withdraw everybody's driver's license and make them do their test again. Okay. Secondly, I would put speed limiters into every single car, allowing no car to travel at a speed in excess of 120 kilometers an hour. Speed camera enforcement has become a billion rand industry across the country. Traffic authorities like the JMPD make up to a hundred million per month. Whilst it's still financially motivated, there are still going to be lots and lots of people who can afford to pay. And there are still going to be lots and lots of people who can afford a number plate for the back of their car that doesn't actually belong to them so that someone else gets the fine. And we are still going to come across people who just remove the number plate off the back of their car. I think the public have got away for too long. But if they get a prosecution in, uh, in the post box, tear it up and throw it away. The attitude of speed is okay, okay, or speeding and reckless driving is okay, has got to change. Okay. But it's not going to change if you're hiding away in bushes and hanging out of trees, Mr. Hernika. The Road Traffic Management Corporation argues that the answer is in the recently enacted legislation known as the ARTO Act. ARTO is one of the best systems that this country has ever had. Why I'm saying that? With the previous systems that we had, if a traffic officer has made a mistake on the ticket, it won't be picked up to still be processed up to the end of where you have to get a warrant of arrest. We want Arto to succeed, not to fail. Okay. We think the idea of having a, a, a points demerit system in this country is a good one, provided that every check and balance is in place, that every system is in place, that you can't have duplicate fines getting issued to people, that people don't lose their driver's licenses for nothing, and similarly that people don't get driver's licenses for nothing. The big challenge that we believe will change the face of policing in South Africa is the fact that you will not be able to get your license disc or be able to renew your driver's license if you have got any outstanding fines on the system that you have totally ignored like in the past. If you don't go and fetch at the post office, it is presumed that after 10 days you did receive the letter and we will go forward. Now that I believe will change the face and will force the people to comply with the act. But just how much do the Metro cops themselves know about the speed camera operational rules known as the TCSP guidelines? Can I ask you a question? TCSP, what's that stand for? You know what the TCSP is? You've been trained with this. What does TCSP stand for? 
I'm convinced to say that training was provided. But one needs to say that notwithstanding the training, we have to acknowledge that we are still identifying a lot of mistakes from the law enforcement agency. And there are some interventions that we are putting in place. We've made the suggestion that, that fines be given different types of penalties, i.e. Uh, that when a person is caught speeding, they are stopped, they are tried at the side of the road by a magistrate, and they are begin, being given the, op, uh, the opportunity to either accept uh, a fine and pay for it, and community service. Money, mm -hmm. you know, surplus, hundred rand. So, I mean, it's not all, and we are already at 2,875. And, and this is what you have already paid. My point, in, exactly. Inclu including the discounts. I was getting to that. There's 3,000. That's another one. Oh, yeah, there are two tickets here, so I paid with a card. Mm -hmm. That's 500 rands. 3,500 all in all. The reason apparently for the so many cameras on the roads is that they were trying to curb the accidents. They are still the same, if not more. If anything, I feel exploited. People feel expo exploited. It's not only me who feels this way. Speaking to friends and, and colleagues and things, who you know, everybody's received speeding fines in their lives, and you speak to them and you say, well, if you re receive a speeding fine for 200 rand or 500 rand or whatever it is, does it change the way you drive? And they say, no, I just, I pay the speeding fine and I carry on with my life. It doesn't make a difference to people. If you've got a ticket, go investigate further. Make sure that you know what your rights are. When one gets a camera-based fine, make sure that there is actually a photograph for it. Okay, um, because a lot of times people have been paying fines based on no photographic evidence at all. Secondly, have a look that it is definitely your car. Uh, there are multitudes of cars that have false number plates. Lastly, have a look that, that everything that is supposed to be on that fine is on that fine. Uh, specifically in Joburg and Swanee, you need to make sure that it's been issued by an officer who has an infrastructure number. If that's not on there, it's not a valid fine. Do not pay it. Okay, Go and dispute it. As Justice Project South Africa awaits results on its complaint against the JMPD, the culture of impunity on our roads continues.